Okay. Eyes and ears focused on the story right now. So there shouldn't be any anything moving around. You're just listening. And that's all we need to do right now. Okay. Our story this week is called I Wonder Why Penguins Can't Fly and Other Questions About Polar Lands. Okay? So we're still kind of dealing with the polar cold areas because last week we talked about the Inuit people and they lived in cold areas. Right, Kelsey? Yes. Sit still and pay attention, please. Okay, so we're going to focus this week on text features. What that means is different things that you can have in a story. You can have not just words and pictures, but you can also have different titles, subtitles, headings. Um, you can have like a timeline in a book. You can have a table of contents. So those are all different features in a text that we're going to talk about. Okay? So let's go ahead and read the story. This is um, written by Pat Jacobs. What is the first text feature you see? What do we call this? Allie, what is that called? Contact, um, contacts. Contents. Table of contents is going to tell you a specific page that you can turn to. Let's just say I want to go to how cold are the poles. I would flip to page 7 to figure that out without having to go through each page. Okay. Table of contents. Where are the poles? The North Pole lies at the center of the Arctic Circle. At the North Pole, wherever you turn, you will be facing south. The South Pole is at the opposite end of Earth, in the middle of the Antarctic Circle on the continent of Antarctica. Okay, so just by reading that first section, what type of book is this? Kelsey? A nonfiction? Not, no, not nonfiction. Fiction? Fiction. I mean, yes, you were right. Sorry. Nonfiction, meaning it's true mostly about facts, right? Yes. Okay, so nonfiction. We see another text feature. It's just got a little diagram over here. We've got things that are being labeled to show us more information. Why is Antarctica the highest and lowest continent? The thick ice sheet makes Antarctica the world's highest continent with an average height of 7,900 feet. At 8,383 feet below sea level, the Bentley subglacial glacial trench in West Antarctica is the lowest place on Earth that is not underwater. Okay, right here it says... At the poles, the sun rises and sets only once a year. Wow. So a day lasts for 12 months. A day? 12 months. Because Earth is tilted, one pole faces the sun for six months, while the other pole is dark. And then the opposite pole has six months of daylight. Pretty interesting, huh? Why are, are there four poles? Earth is a giant magnet, which is why a compass points to the North Pole. The geographic North and South Poles are fixed points, but because Earth's magnetic field is always changing, the magnetic North and South Poles move every day. How can North become South? Every so often, Earth's magnetic field reverses, so a compass that pointed north would then point south. This last occurred more than 780,000 years ago, and scientists think that it is due to, due to happen again. Can deserts be snowy? Hmm, what do y'all think? Yeah, no. Some people say yes, yeah, some people say no. Very cold air cannot hold much water, so it rarely snows at the poles. 
Parts of the Arctic are as dry as the Sahara Desert, and Antarctica is the driest continent on Earth. In fact, it, in fact, it the world's biggest desert. That seems like a typo there. A camel in the Sahara, the world's big, largest hot desert. Okay, so the Sahara, the Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert. Were the poles always frozen? About 165 million years ago, the climate was warmer than it is today, and the polar ice caps did not exist. Forests reached as far as the South Pole and were home to dinosaurs such as Antarctica Pelta. Left. So there's, at one point, it was not frozen. How cold are the poles? In Antarctica in 1983, a temperature of negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded, cold enough to freeze the mercury in a thermometer. The winter temperature at the North Pole averages negative 29 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 30 degrees Fahrenheit colder than a freezer. Okay, so we've got different diagrams here. Antarctica is the world's windiest place. The winds that blow around the coast can reach speeds of about 190 miles per hour. Okay, down here, North Pole, top of the world. Here's the Arctic Ocean. Antarctica is at the South Pole, the bottom of the world. So they're just giving you a picture of what the poles look like if you were to look at them. Um, face side down, okay, or face side up. Why is Antarctica colder than the Arctic? Okay, so Antarctica is at the South Pole. Why would you think that would be colder than the Arctic, which is at the top? Think about the sun and where it's pointed. Hmm. Let's read. Antarctica is a continent surrounded by the sea. Why the Arctic is an ocean surrounded by land. Water stays warmer than land during the winter, so on average, Antarctica is about 30 degrees colder than the Arctic. Okay? So the Arctic is warmer because it's surrounded by ocean. How are icebergs formed? Icebergs are huge blocks of freshwater ice that break off from glaciers or from the ice shelf and float out to sea. The largest known iceberg was bigger than the island of Jamaica and the tallest was the height of a 55-story building. How thick is polar ice? Sea ice in the Arctic is about 10 feet thick during the winter. The thickest ice is found in the Bentley Subglacial Trench, the lowest point in Antarctica. There, the ice measures up to 15,670 feet. That is almost six times the height of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. That's the tallest building in the world. See, it's over here. Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the tallest building in the world. Ice flows slowly from the center of Antarctica to the coast. An iceberg floating in the sea today could contain snow that fell on the South Pole during the time of the Neanderthals, early humans who lived about 100,000 years ago. What is permafrost? Permafrost is ground that is frozen all year long. In 2007, a perfectly preserved baby mammoth thought to have died 10,000 years ago was unearthed from the permafrost in Siberia, Russia. Oh my goodness. So, it's the, the mammoth was perfectly preserved in the permafrost in the ground. Here is another little 
tech speak chair with the box with more information. Only about one eighth of an iceberg can be seen. The rest is hidden below the water. Small icebergs are called growlers because they often make a growling noise as trapped air escapes from the ice. What lights up the sky? And see, I think this is pretty cool. I would love to see this one day. The solar wind carries electrically charged particles from the sun toward Earth. Some particles enter our atmosphere above the magnetic poles and collide with Earth's gases, creating a fantastic light show called the Northern or Southern Lights. That sounds awesome. I never saw one before. You would have to be um, in very far north or very far south to be able to see them. What is diamond dust? When the air temperature is very low, Excuse me. When the air temperature is very low, water vapor in the atmosphere freezes to form tiny ice crystals. These catch the sun's light and sparkle like a sprinkling of diamonds in the sky. Which dogs are found at the poles? Sun dogs are bright flares that appear on either side of the sun when ice crystals in the sky reflect the sunlight. Moon dogs are sometimes seen too when the moon is very bright. A whiteout occurs when low white clouds cover the sky and the snow and sky merge into one. People say that it is like being trapped inside a huge white ball. Hmm, can you imagine? A Brocken Spectre is a large ghostly figure with a rainbow halo. It is actually a person's shadow cast by low sun onto distant fog. This is a long book. Does anyone live in Antarctica? What do y'all think? No, duh. No one lives there permanently, but Antarctica is visited by about 4,000 scientists during the summer. Only about 1,000 stay to brave the cold, dark winter, though. The cold, dark winter. Sorry. Who first came to the poles? American explorers Frederick Cook and Robert Perry both claim to have reached the North Pole first. Cook in 1908 and Perry in 1909. Roald Anundsen led the first expedition to the South Pole, arriving in December 1911. Polar explorers used huskies to pull their sleds, but today dogs are banned from Antarctica to protect the wildlife. Do people still build igloos? Yes. The word igloo means house in the Inuit language. So people in the Arctic do live in igloos, but igloos made of snow are now built only as temporary shelters during hunting trips. Okay, so an igloo is just a word for house for the Inuit people. That's their language. They are made out of snow temporarily, but really their house is kind of like ours. Okay, we'll come back and read these um, text boxes. We're almost out of time. Are there any polar plants? Ooh, what do you think? Do you think plants can survive at the poles? Yes. The poles are covered in ice all year long, but plants grow in less cold areas called the tundra. For a few weeks in the middle of the summer, the Arctic tundra is carpeted in color as plants that have spent the winter beneath the snow burst into bloom. How do plants survive? the cold. Tundra plants huddle close to the ground in tight clumps and often have hairy leaves and stems to protect them from the cold. Cup-shaped flowers follow the sun as it moves across the sky. Okay. Okay, which tree grows in the treeless tundra? The word tundra comes from a Finnish word meaning treeless plain, so you would not expect to find any trees there. Yet a type of willow only 8 inches tall has adapted to the cold, windy climate, and provides food for caribou, 
musk oxen, arctic hares, and lemmings. Most owls are active only when it is dark, but snowy owls hunt in daylight too. Otherwise, they would starve during the Arctic summer when the sun never sets. Permafrost stops melting snow from sinking into the ground, so it forms pools of water that are perfect nurseries for mosquito larvae. Sometimes the mosquito swarms are so large that they turn, to, turn the sky gray. Ugh, I would hate to live there. In the summer, animals such as snowy owls and caribou take advantage of the plentiful food to raise their young and fatten up for the winter. How do animals survive the Arctic winter? In the winter, temperatures in the Arctic drop to negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, so polar animals grow a thick winter coat to keep them warm. The Arctic fox even has fur on the bottom of its feet and uses its bushy tail as a blanket. So here's your Arctic fox. An Arctic fox hears small animals moving in their underground burrows. It pounces to break through the snow and then grabs its prey. Beneath its thick coat, the polar bear has black skin that absorbs heat from the sun and keeps the animal warm. Why aren't polar bears white? If you plucked a few hairs from a polar bear, you would find that they are colorless. Okay, sorry for that interruption. We had some people barge in here. Okay, so if you plucked a few hairs from a polar bear, you would find that they are colorless. Like snow and ice, the hairs are translucent. Light passes through them, but they look white to us. Which creatures change color? Arctic wolves, foxes, and ermines turn white in the winter so they can creep up on their prey without being seen. Arctic hares and colored lemmings grow white fur too, so predators find them difficult to spot in the snow. Collared um, lemmings are a favorite food for Arctic predators. A large family of Arctic foxes can eat up to 4,000 lemmings before the young leave the den. Okay, so here's what they are, these little mice looking things. The Arctic ground squirrel hibernates from September to April to escape the winter cold. Its body temperature drops to 27 degrees Fahrenheit during its seven months sleep. Which animal bullies bigger creatures? The wolverine below is a fast and fierce hunter armed with strong jaws and sharp claws. Arctic hares, squirrels, and birds are easy prey, but this dog-sized predator also steals kills from bears and cougars and sometimes attacks much larger animals such as caribou. A wolverine steals food from a grizzly bear. In the late summer, caribou stomp their feet, shake their heads, and run around wildly. They are trying to escape the horrible flies that lay their eggs in the caribou's fur. How do musk oxen protect their young? Adult musk oxen have sharp horns that can kill or injure the arctic wolves that prey on the herd. When predators are nearby, the adults form a circle around the young, creating a spiky barricade with their horns. Musk oxen have hardly changed since prehistoric times when they lived alongside woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers. Although the Antarctic coastline is home to many birds and sea mammals, the largest creature that spends its whole life on land is a wingless fly, only 0.3 inches long. Actual size. Who puts puffins in danger? Puffins, natural predators, include gulls, squaws, foxes, sharks, and killer whales, but humans are the greatest threat to their survival. Puffins feed on fish and other sea creatures, so they are endangered by overfishing and oil spills. In some places, people still eat puffins and their eggs. Puffins have backward-pointing spines on their tongues and the tops of their mouths to hold onto their fish catches. One puffin was seen with more than 60 fish in its beak. A skua chases a, a kelp gull. 
The Wandering Albatross is a superb flyer with the wildest or widest wingspan of any bird, but it is very clumsy on land and often turns somersaults as it crash lands reg and regularly trips over its own feet. <laughs> Which bird migrates from pole to pole? Arctic tern breeds on the tundra and then flies to Antarctica as winter approaches. It makes the longest migration of any bird traveling more than 21,750 miles each year. There's the Arctic tern. A skua attacks a penguin colony. Although they have webbed feet, it seems that Arctic terns do not like the water. They swoop down to catch fish but do their best to avoid getting wet. Are there pirates at the poles? Skuas are nicknamed pirates because they steal food from other birds in midair. They target penguin colonies too, often working in pairs. While one skua distracts a penguin, the other steals its egg or chick. Why can't penguins fly? Most birds have lightweight skeletons, but penguins have heavy, solid bones and a thick layer of fat to keep them warm. They would need huge wings to lift themselves up into the air. Instead, their wings have turned into small, stiff flippers that power their streamlined bodies through the water. King penguins dive down 980 feet in search of fish and squids. Here's the penguin wing, a gull wing, so you can see the difference in their bone structure, their skeletons. Why don't polar bears eat penguins? A polar bear would have to swim a long way to eat a penguin because they live at opposite ends of Earth. Polar bears live in the Arctic and penguins are found only south of the equator. So here's a picture. Here, polar bears are in the Arctic and a penguin lives, um, actually polar bear yeah, polar bears live in the Arctic and penguins are found in the Antarctic. At five and a half feet tall, a penguin that waddled the earth around 40 million years ago could easily have pecked a man in the eye. Fossils of this Antarctic giant were found on Seymour Island. Why don't penguins' eggs freeze? An emperor penguin's egg would freeze in minutes if it were left on the ice, so the penguins balance their eggs on their feet and keep them warm inside a brood pouch. This is a flap of featherless skin that wraps around the egg. Which seal is a champion diver? Weddell seals dive down to 2,300 feet in search of fish and squids, and they can stay underwater for more than an hour. Their strong teeth help to breathing holes in the ice, and they sometimes blow air into, the, into cracks in the ice to startle fish, which then swim right into the seal's mouths. Southernmost seal. The Weddell seals live in Antarctica, farther south than any other seal. Polar fish have antifreeze in their blood to stop them from freezing solid. This fish antifreeze is sometimes used to stop ice crystals from forming in ice cream. Very interesting. Where would you find a bloodless fish? The crocodile ice fish that lives in the sea around Antarctica has no red blood cells, so its blood is clear, just like water. The fish gets its name from its long snout, which is packed with white teeth. As walrus warm up in the sun, blood flows to the surface of their skin and they turn from muddy brown to pink. <laughs> Who was called the unicorn of the sea? The male narwhal's unicorn-like tusk is actually an overgrown tooth. When the whale is one year old, one of his two top teeth grows from his lip. A 10-year-old narwhal's tusk can be 10 feet in length. Which hungry gulper eats four tons a day? The blue whale is the biggest creature ever to have lived, yet it feeds on some of the smallest animals. Blue whales eat krill, swallowing more than four million each day during the summer months when they come to feed in polar waters. Why are polar seals or seas so lively? 
The oceans around the poles are teeming with life. Cold water absorbs more oxygen and currents carry nutrients to the surface, where they feed the phytoplankton, microscopic plants eaten by krill, which are an important food for many sea creatures. Sea squirt. Blue whales are not only big, they are very noisy too. Their, skull, their calls are louder than a jet engine and can be heard more than 500 miles away. My goodness. What are krill? Krill are tiny shrimp-like animals that gather in swarms up to four miles long during the polar summers, often turning the water pink. One gallon of water can contain 250 krill. So think of one gallon like a milk jug. 250 krill can live inside there. The Antarctic seabed is home to many strange creatures including sea squirts that look like glass tulips, huge starfish, and sea spiders the size of dinner plates with up to 12 legs. What does Antarctica tell us about space? The only place colder than Antarctica is outer space, so it is the best place on Earth to test the space robots of the future. Underwater vehicle Endurance has been studying Lake Bonnie, but one day it might explore the ocean that scientists believe li lies beneath the icy crust of Europa, one of Ju Jupiter's largest moons. Why is Antarctica a meteorite hotspot? There is nowhere better to search for meteorites because they are so easy to see on the Antarctic ice sheet. Nomad is a robotic meteorite hunter that can tell the difference between a meteorite and a normal rock. Some of the meteorites it has found came from, came from Mars. Scientists have found large amounts of cosmic dust in Antarctic ice cores. They think the dust fell to Earth when a giant space rock exploded above the continent about 480,000 years ago. Why is ice like a time machine? Each layer of snow contains clues to what is happening in the world. By drilling out cores from polar ice, scientists can unlock the past and learn about volcanic eruptions, forest fires, dust storms, and temperature changes that occurred up to 750,000 years ago. Because Antarctica is dark both day and night during the winter and the dry air is crystal clear, it is the best place in the world to view the stars. Ice cores are long cylinders of compacted snow. They contain ash, dust, chemicals, and radioactive substances and even material from outer space. Who pollutes the poles? Sadly, human activities sometimes produce chemicals and oil spills that pollute our world. Winds and ocean currents may carry these pollutants to the poles where they can harm the, create, the creatures that live there. What is the ozone hole? Ozone is a gas in our upper atmosphere that protects us from harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun. Human-made chemicals can destroy ozone, and every spring the ozone layer above Antarctica has been getting thinner. A smaller ozone hole has recently appeared over the Arctic, too. Okay, so here's ozone hole in 2009. Green means it's high, purple means it's low. One. Plankton absorb pollutants and are eaten by fish. Two, seals eat the fish and the harmful chemicals are stored in their fat. Okay, and then when polar bears eat the seals, poisons build up in their body. So that's the cycle of how these chemicals and oil spills that humans um, pollute in the ocean are carried through to the polar animals. So we need to do our part to take care of them and not cause these spills and create chemical messes. What if all of the polar ice melted? Ooh, I know, our world would be flooded. If the polar ice caps melted, the sea would rise about 200 feet and many low-lying countries would be flooded. 
but it would take thousands of years for this to happen. Okay, so here's the, an example of what it might look like. Who lives where? These lists are a guide to the natural habitats of the animals shown in this book. So here's the Arctic. We have the Arctic fox, Arctic ground squirrel, Arctic hare, Arctic wolf, caribou, which is also called a reindeer, collared lemming, ermine, grizzly bear, muskox, narwhal, polar bear, puffin, snowy owl, walrus, wolverine, Ar or Antarctica. We have the crocodile ice fish, kelp gull, penguin, wandering albatross, weddell seal. And remember, Antarctica is at the bottom. That's in the south, south pole. Arctic is in the north pole. Arctic and Antarctica. So we have the Arctic tern, the blue whale, krill, and skua can be found in both. Okay, and then you can see our last text feature, index. So this is going in alphabetical order. You can find a subject matter that you want to look at. Maybe you want to find magnetic poles, and you can read about that on page 5 and 10. Okay. All right, that is all we're going to do today for reading. We um, already have used enough time, so we will continue going over this story, our vocabulary, and text features starting tomorrow. Okay.